All right, can you hear me? Okay, thank you. Sorry, I don't know if I remember this mic. Uh, good morning. My name is Laura Slazak, and I am an ELCA missionary to Japan. Uh, before I went to Japan, I served as a pulpit supply preacher here once a month in the months leading up to my departure. I think that would have been the end of 2021, beginning of 2022. I was raised in the Lutheran Church from the time I was five years old, and I was really tempted to try giving the sermon without any notes or a manuscript. After all, how hard can it be to talk about yourself? But as I was running through the sermon last night, I realized my crucial misstep in judgment. You see, I landed in the U.S. on Thursday morning after an overnight flight from Tokyo, and I'm pretty sure that I left half of my brain somewhere over the Pacific Ocean. So back to using written notes I went. My life has never gone the way I expected. I went to university with one idea of my future and have found myself blindly doing my best to follow the Holy Spirit one step at a time. I have tried to pay attention to what feels right in the moment and follow opportunities as they have arisen. And so far, I have been utterly wrong every time I have tried to figure out anything beyond six months later. And even at that time limit, I'm still on my toes. How did I end up in Japan, you might be asking? Well, I took the usual route to get there. I got my Master's of Divinity from seminary, completed a chaplaincy residency, attempted to go through the first call process, and encountered a number of roadblocks, before remembering a couple of overseas opportunities through the ELCA that I first learned about in seminary, one of which included teaching English in Japan. The usual way one moves to Asia for their first time, right? While a global pandemic did its best to keep me in the US, six months behind schedule, I was able to move to Kumamoto City in southern Japan and truly hit the ground running. Japan can be an overwhelming country, particularly outside of the, city, the big cities. The language is complex and completely different from English. I've been grateful for my smartphone and its communication technologies more times than I can count. While my life got off to a somewhat slow and difficult start there, I contracted COVID for the second time the first month I lived there, it has grown and blossomed over time. Accompaniment is a major cornerstone of my job. I am a resource for English at the school I teach, and my colleagues are a resource for me when it comes to Japanese language and customs. They often consult with me on test questions and other English concerns, and I am responsible for grading students' writing. I'm constantly grateful for my colleagues and their kindness and friendship. My students are always keeping me on my toes, asking English questions that have either never occurred to me or that I haven't thought about in years. <laughs> and at the same time, their hopes and dreams for their lives ahead are a joy to watch develop and grow. I'm grateful for all the times I get to learn more about each of them, particular, particularly those who are involved in the English-speaking society at school that meets twice a week. My life in Kumamoto has been richly blessed with many people outside of my work at the school. Naoko has been an invaluable friend since I arrived in Japan. My first Sunday was Easter Sunday in 2022, and I wondered about the older Japanese woman who insisted that we take a photo together upon first meeting. But Naoko is a treasure. She is why there is an English conversation class at the church open to and attended by the community at large. She is a force of nature and someone I look up to. Miki and her husband Shojiro had me over for dinner shortly before Christmas my first year, which led to them having me over for dinner my, for my first New Year's or Shogatsu in Japan. It is their major family holiday, and having a family to spend it with meant so much to me. One of my favorite moments 
was finishing the traditional meal with them and then learning we were going to visit more of their family next door. To my utter surprise, there was an entire other traditional meal waiting for me there. I had not planned ahead for that, <laughs> but I did my best to eat some of the delicious food anyway. It was reminiscent of one of the Christmas episodes from the Vicar of Dibley, where she goes from house to house and has to eat like five or six Christmas dinners. <laughs> Aside from the many people I have connected with, watching the church operate in Japan and how they support both their local community and international causes has been meaningful. While the island of Kyushu has more Christians than you would probably expect, Christianity is still a, such a tiny minority of the population. Each person navigates that reality differently, yet faithfully. I know the church as a whole is struggling with aging congregations and having difficulty finding enough pastors. Each pastor I know has three or four congregations under their care. I am inspired by their commitment to engage and support their communities as they move into the future. I have been really blessed. Japan and her people have come to mean more to me than I could have ever anticipated. I felt that I wasn't going to be ready for something new so quickly and renewed for another year, which means I'm staying in this job until 2025. I want to take a moment to thank you for your ongoing interest in my work. A Japanese tradition is to bring a small token of gratitude usually a sweet or some other food, to people you know when traveling. It is known as omiyage, which doesn't really have a direct English translation, but is usually described as a combination between the words for souvenir and gift. I brought you uh, Kit Kats from Japan, which you can find in the back after the service. They are matcha flavored, which is another popular trend in Japan. Kit Kats are actually incredibly popular in Japan because they are called kitokato in Japanese, which sounds like the phrase kitokatsuto, which means you shall surely win. Students consider them good luck and like to eat one before exams. So they have uh, like dozens and dozens of flavors. Thank you again for having me and blessings on your life and ministry together. Amen.